Hey guys, today we're going to be drawing airports. More specifically, we're going to be drawing planes. And we're going to be use, using the sketchbook. This is a Cottonwood D3 sketchbook, uh, pretty compact in size, and it works really well, um, really great for traveling. And uh, just kind of show you a little bit of what's sort of in here. It's just a lot of sketches. Um, I also have notes in here that kind of uh, help me remember key points that can help me improve for the next time. And so this is sort of like a just a visual sort of a um, a visual diary of things that I've seen or things that I've thought about and, and just jotting them down. I even do studies. These are actually from uh, Dream Worlds. You know, uh, some other images that you'd either find on the internet uh, just to do like quick studies off of, or you know, actually doing real studies off of um, existing weapons and elements that we see through different time periods. So, I just want to show you guys a, a quick process about airports and how I like to sketch them. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples really quickly of some airports if I can find them. And so, here's one of them. Um, it, it really helps to, you know, sort of uh, be able to examine and, and draw out a couple of different views. Um, you can kind of see them over here. I, I draw out a couple of different views just to sort of practice out the, um, you know, the actual composition, practice the lighting, the shadows, uh, the forms especially. And um, by the time I do these two, by the time I get to the main one, um, you know, it goes pretty smooth. So what I'm going to be concentrating on today is, is going over a process of how to do one of these, but I'm going to be doing it on a, on a full page, so it's just a, a bit more viewable. All right. Um, just to let you guys know, I, I always use reference. Um, reference is super important when it comes to doing our concept art and our designing. So something to keep in mind. And uh, let's, let's get started. All right, guys, so here we go. Um, I'm going to start off with the horizon line really quickly. And this horizon line just helps me orientate basically what I'm looking at. you know, And it, and it gives me a pretty decent idea about how to judge angles off of that horizon line. Okay, So I'm just going to be drawing a really large tube that is extremely foreshortened in space. Okay, and you can sort of see the volumetric kind of thickness that's here. Now, if you guys want to learn a lot more about how to draw through vehicles, how to do some of these uh, initial lay-ins and stuff, I would highly recommend uh, Scott Robertson's How to Draw Book, and it really goes over the, the meticulous details and the uh, understanding of form to communicate it properly. Okay, but today we're going to be going over just my process of sketching. So it does have a lot to do with the how to draw philosophies uh, from Scott Robertson's uh, Design Studio Press books, but also has to do a lot with just practicing your own techniques and developing your own aesthetics and your own process. So as I start to draw through the form here, I'm actually doing measurements, and these measurements allow me to see where I can start placing the wing. Because the wing is, is kind of like the anatomy of the plane. If we, sort of like a, a person, you know. So if you draw a person, you're going to want to make sure that you have pretty good anatomy, your proportions are correct, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much what we want to look at for the plane. The vehicle, its wings are something very, very important, and each, each airplane has a different type of aesthetic. It has a different proportion of wing size, where the wings are placed according to the fuselage, uh, how large is the cockpit, and so on and so forth. And so uh, paying attention to those is really good. Another thing that is important is, again, utilizing these draw-through marks as measurements. And these lines are, are very ghosted in, they're very light, okay? And as we go through the illustration more, we're going to be accenting different areas with, with a brush pen. 
Okay, and you can see that here. So the ley-in lines become less apparent. They become less visible. So just worry about making sure that we get the right proportions in place before we're moving forward. Okay, I'm finding where that center point is for the, for the tip of the nose. And actually, I like to use the, um, the latter half of the demo, or excuse me, the latter half of the lay-in to mess around with the actual nose of the ship. Now, the reason for that is because it's sort of like the face. You know, when you draw a person, the face becomes like the focal point. And same thing is true for a vehicle. Okay, in particular, this vehicle. Okay, now right now the scenario is that this this vehicle is actually parked at the dock, okay, at the gate, at an airport, and we're just trying to make it look like that all of that is happening here, make it a believable scene. Okay, now my lane here is still very, very loose. Okay, I still want to make sure that I'm getting the overall proportions in place before I'm um, solidifying any real hard rules. Okay, I'm not committing to anything just yet. Everything's basically just a lane. Now, I see that the vanishing point from the ship is right around here, so I'm going to use that as a way to start marking down the ground. Now when I start marking down the ground, what it's going to look like is that we see the panels and we see the actual perspective of the ground being much more apparent. And that starts to help with just the readability of any image. Okay, so you got that going. Now I can see under here that there's a little bit of perspective that I can reinforce also with the underplane of that and I'm going to continue that rhythm along the bottom plane to indicate the ground. Okay, so it's kind of like we've made a grid. Now the grid allows me to also judge where to place other elements within the space very, very easily. So it's almost like we're just drawing cubes in space. Not that difficult. It does take practice though. But even in a series like this, just a, a, a few couple boxes can really start to uh, make it look like something very sophisticated, make it look like something very believable as well as um, accurate and fun. Okay. Just judging everything according to the to the grid on the ground. Those perspective lines were laid out there for a reason, and if we can understand that they're purposeful and that we need to make sure that we abide by the rules, then uh, we will be in a... Our drawing will actually... It'll look pretty good. And we just got to make sure we follow those rules. Okay, just drawing some shadow line on the underplane. Um, basically my shadow is, is pretty much falling straight down with a slight uh, angle pushing off to the right. And you can see that cast shadow line from the tire indicating that line right there. Stroking the marks just a couple times to reinforce sort of the line weight. And uh, line weight's important because it actually tells the viewer what you think is important, right? When you stroke a line a little bit harder or, you know, with more intent, that gives the viewer, right, the audience, a little bit more of an understanding of what you think is the valuable part of your uh, drawing, okay? So you're literally communicating that to your audience, and I think that's really cool, you know? So let me just lay in some windows here. Got 
Alright. Second row of windows up at the top with emergency doors just in case. Now even though airplanes don't always use every door that's on it, they're there for safety reasons, right? So we kind of have to remember that and uh, understand that that's why they're built and that's how they're built. Now circles are always challenging. No matter how much I draw, circles always tend to become those uh, challenging points. So one thing that I one thing that I like to do actually is I'm actually happy that you know we're going to be implementing another stage into this paint, into this drawing, right? Which is actually adding in some color accents and stuff with values. And I'm happy we're able to do that because it's going to actually disguise, it's going to hide some of that mess up over there. So don't feel like you have to make the perfect mark from the beginning, because I think that's actually impossible. Right? You eventually get there. You know, but it takes just a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice to get that. More shadows. And put more uh, equipment down here. Okay. Maybe a couple of people for scale. Okay, with the right shadow lines and whatnot. Now, the stuff around the plane, right, that's what's going to give it a setting. That's what's going to tell people, hey, we are at an airport. We're actually fueling up the plane. That's what some of those lines are. You know, we have we have trucks that are lined up, and here's like some cheesy logo. Okay, and trucks are lined up, loading up the uh, cargo bay of this airplane, and. Uh, we can actually see that there's maybe a, a, a gate that's connected to the fuselage. And that gate has a, a lot of perforated kind of uh, surfaces. It's almost like an accordion, right? Like expands out. So we want to be able to indicate that in our drawing as well. Okay, filling in the background now. A lot of uh, smaller shapes back here, indicating some of the scale and distance. Some poles with lights, and we see a lot of those at airports, right? Maybe there's a tower back here. Some radar equipment. Windows and stuff. Over here is like an airport hangar. It's a huge, huge building with huge, huge doors, right? Because the planes are so wide because of the wingspan. Okay. Just drawing some more. Another shadow line back there. Now, a lot of space over here. Now, this line that I just quickly jotted down right there, that's the shadow line of the backside. So, as this plane starts to go from plane to shadow, there's going to be a little bit of light right here. So, let's put stuff in that lit area. Okay, we've got some people over there. Some more equipment. Some windows and stuff. Soft ghosted lines.
now I'm doing the windows, and these windows are taking a little bit more attention because they're almost like the eyes of a person, right? You're almost anticipating and hoping to actually see something inside of those windows, maybe a pilot, right? Or maybe you can see instruments or something. But it's a natural tendency for us to like want to look inside of those windows, much like we look at people's eyes when we talk to them. So what does that mean for us when we draw? Slow it down just a little bit when you're doing these windows, okay? Even the ones up on the side as well, because they become very, very important to the overall understanding of the shapes. Okay? All right. So you have this airport drawing with a uh, passenger plane being loaded and fueled. You see the gate being attached to the upper deck of the, of the plane as well. Um, let's go ahead and draw a couple of clouds in here. Now for clouds, what I'm particularly thinking about is how to make rhythm and how to give the sky an understanding of perspective because sometimes the sky is, is just so uh, flattened out and boring that it's a challenge to make it look fun and interesting. So I'm just trying to create a series of overlaps and underlaps utilizing pieces of cloud and different sky elements. And uh, that's pretty much just about it. Just filling in some space. Okay. So very, very stylized clouds. Alrighty. So that just about does it for the lay-in. Let's uh, now move into working on to the values. Now for values, what I like to use actually is uh, two different types of brush pens. The first pen is the Pentel brush pen, and I'll show it to you guys right here. Uh, really awesome pen. Um, throws down ink really well, very controllable, very, very fine tip as you can see it on here. And the cool thing about this is when you open it, it actually has these, these ink cartridges. This is a pretty new one, so it's going to last a, a pretty good amount of time. But I highly recommend having um, more ink cartridges with you at all times because this pen becomes really fun to draw with and really easily you can run out of ink. The other, uh, the other type of brush pen that I like is actually, it's watered down ink from the same pen. And you can see over here that this one is uh, it's watered down. You can kind of see it switching around in there and stuff. And also another brush pen. Um, and this is actually just ink with water. So it's actually the water-based ink. So I like to use my line for the lay-in, um, this dark pen for accents, and then this one just for like half tones. So let's get started. I'm going to work with the darker accents first. And so you can see that I have a little piece of paper here um, behind my sketchbook, and that's for, for me to, like, dab, you know, uh, some of the ink, because sometimes you, you, you might split the hairs, um, or it might not be a fine, fine tip uh, just for what we're trying to do, but it helps to kind of have that paper around. Also, I, I use, like, this uh, spare, sheet in the, uh, spare sheet in the back sometimes just to kind of get that going so you can kind of see it in there. So I'm going to start with accents, which are cast shadows and areas of dark recess that I know have no light. Okay? So it's going to be a little bit spotty at first, but slowly the image will start to uh, actually form together because we're identifying what's a dark and what's a light shape.
And this technique becomes really fun because what it allows you to do, it, it, it actually allows you to develop, well, at least for me, it allows me to develop a sort of a painter's eye. Okay. And that's what's actually really important because a lot of my work gets translated directly into digital or um, traditional paintings. And because traditional paintings and digital paintings require looking at form and light differently from when you're just drawing in line, when, when I switch over to the brush pen, it makes me think about those things. And, and, and it actually makes me feel a little bit more comfortable when I paint. It's, it's kind of a weird thing, but it's sort of like you're practicing to get better at something um, without actually practicing the actual thing you're trying to get better at. I don't know if that made any sense. Um, I guess it's sort of like doing a lot of jogging to get better at playing soccer, you know, or like running. Um, it, it improves your cardio, it improves your agility, your stamina, right, uh, your strength, your core, but it also uh, just complements you with just playing better soccer probably as well, right? And one thing that I do want to let you guys know is in this process here, I'm heavily, heavily concentrated on making sure that these forms read in the dark. So that means sometimes leaving just a little bit, a little bit of that extra white that you see right there. Okay, it's like leaving that little bit of space allows the eye to see outside of the line, not only inside of the line. And uh, I'm not too worried about the overall cleanliness. Okay, guys, this is a study. I'm doing a sketch, right? I'm not worried about, you know, if one line is messed up, I have to scratch the whole thing and start all over. It's not about that, you know. And in fact, I'll show you guys a piece in my sketchbook that I don't really want to show, <laughs> but... It's, it's important for me to show you guys that even for, you know, any professional, their sketchbook is, is where they make mistakes. That's where they practice. And, you know, just making sure that we have that comfort level with making mistakes is really, really important. Because art is not about perfection. It's actually about finding the answer in your own way, right? Perfection usually, I guess, means that there's only one real way to do it. But that's the great thing about art is it can be perfect and it can be different all at the same time. I guess that's why I really fell in love with it. So, now, some of you guys might be asking, well, how do I utilize this within concept art, James? Um, the thing is, is that once we practice this enough times with subject matter that we know and that we can compare to the real thing, then we can start getting into imaginative places. And the process of drawing, the process of utilizing the brush pen will not change, okay? You might change the brush pen out for, um, you know, like a marker, like a Copic marker, or you might even switch it out for your, you know, digital Wacom tablet, right? But one thing is, is for certain is that even though you switch your tool, your mind will still be focused on the same things. And that that is very, very crucial for this type of development. Put some graphics on the back wing. Switching over to my pen real quick. Just want to get a center line kind of down this guy and have it wrap around the plane, sort of like a graphic.
Cool. Now, that line actually helps quite a ton. You know, it, it kind of shows the form, it shows the center line, and now, especially, it's going to help us get into the gray tones. Actually, before I do that, i got to finish up back here. Now, I have a... Uh, Sorry, I keep on messing with my pen. But I have a um, the nose over here that is mostly in light. So i got to be careful not to put too much light behind it so I can really pop that form out. Okay, got some shadows of them along the wall over here and stuff. And also, uh, just to let you guys know, this pen, really cool pen, sell it all over eBay, not too expensive, uh, is one of my favorite pens. Um, it's called the Jetstream, and it's a 0.5, as you guys can see over here. Uh, really, really cool pen. It's what I use day in, pretty much day out. And just randomly, a friend of mine who came by the studio just to kind of hang out was like, hey, James, you should try this pen out. It's really cool. And I gave it a shot, and what do you know? I liked it. There we go. Let's go into like the gray tones. So you can see here that this is a, a much more kind of like watery substance, right? You can see how you could, I, I could even get some of the smears going. And I actually do finger rubbing on my sketchbook with this pen. Um, you know, why not? So let's get started again. I'm going to make sure that I start with... Uh, coloring in my half tones. Now the half tones I have to remember that the light is actually coming from this direction. So if I have an object here like this and the light is actually kind of hitting this side, this top surface is going to be a little bit darker, just ever so slightly. So I'm just going to utilize that basic idea of like how to light a cube in space and just use that as its main direction. Okay, And you can kind of see how it gets a little clumped up over there. So actually, sometimes I have a just like a tissue, and I'll just dab it. Okay, half tones, just dab it. Get some of that extra ink off. Okay, and get the nose in there. And even at times. I'll dry out this, and I'll show you guys just like different techniques, because you can see like when you just dab it like this and, and let it absorb a little bit, it's like a dry brush. You know, you're getting these like super streak marks, you can kind of see over there. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to kind of utilize this brush pen, which is really, really awesome. Alrighty, so it's like a half tone body. Same thing with the backgrounds. The backgrounds are still going to be affected by the same light, so we might as well keep it universal. Getting this tone a little bit darker. And cool thing about this uh, sketchbook, guys, no bleed. Awesome. Saves a ton of paper.
Alrighty, so I'm just going around, just kind of adding in some touch-up marks. Put a little logo over there. I have no idea. It's like, for some reason, like a Star Trek logo. A couple of just cleanup lines. Just looking around to see if I've missed anything else. Okay. And, um,. That about covers it, guys. So we've done a um, an airport sketch, right? We've made sure that we use the the jet stream pen, the 0.5 pen for uh, initial lay-in. Uh, we also have the you know your Pentel black brush pen, um, as well as Pentel. This is just an actual blank. You know they they sell these without any ink in them. Uh, these are actually pretty empty and just clear. And you can put in any colored ink, uh, and you can water it down to any degree that you want um, as well. And so this is this is my process uh, for having to do these really, really quick sort of uh, value sketches. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions or comments, you know, you could uh, always visit me on my Facebook at Art of James Pack, or you can also visit my Instagram at James Pack Art, and, and let me know what you guys think. All right. Uh, also, don't miss my YouTube channel, where I'm going to be updating more videos, uh, more process tutorials, and things like that um, uh, in the near future. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot, and thanks for joining. I'll catch you next time.